Hello and welcome to another episode. Today we start with the topic, Twitch decides to copy TikTok. So Loco TV on Twitter has posted this clip, someone from Twitch talking about an upcoming feature. Would Twitch think about adding a TikTok or shorts-like feature to help discovery on the platform? Uh, so I assume this question comes off the back of the uh, vertical editor that we released a couple of weeks ago to t help turn your clips really quickly into vertical content editing. Um, and we had some integrations in there that helped you export those uh, for use elsewhere. Uh, and the obvious question we got is like, hey, would you guys ever think of integrating that into Twitch? Uh, to which I'd say, we have thought about that uh, and uh, watch this space. I'm hoping to share more with you soon. Twitch at one point in time had the largest repository of clips that were funny about gaming. Thousands upon thousands of them, ones with hundreds of thousands of views, unique special moments that were hilarious, that you could scroll through and you'd largely have to find them on Reddit. But like, the second they became a week old, no one would ever see them again because there was no directory in which you could scroll through them, right? They were third party things, but they were not very easy to use. And so people would say like, hey Twitch, why don't we have just like some place where all these clips are? And you can like push the best ones to the top and we can just like scroll through them. And Twitch was like, nah, how, how could that be successful? That's dumb. What are you talking about? And then like Vine, TikTok, uh, Instagram Reels, uh, what, what are the other ones? Uh, YouTube Shorts. All these have come out and now Twitch is eons behind in this way. They're like, hey, we're gonna, gonna finally release that thing you guys have been saying for the last like 10 years we should have. That's just so silly. And this on the back of when Twitch was having their DMCA drama, where it was possible for people to get DMCA claims, uh, get a copyright strike from clips that they had made like even years ago. At that point, Twitch was like, oh, if you don't want to get striked for your old clips, just delete all your clips. They had countless thousands of these special moments in gaming history. And they were just like, yeah, just delete them all. Fuck it. Ultimately, that was the event that led to my original clips channel, if you recall. Them saying that and the, and the whole drama around people getting striked. But I just mean, they are so late to the game on uh, with this feature. And they're now having to conform to this 9 by 16 ratio that's now popular. Even though, like, all of Twitch is shot in six, 16 by 9. Man, how good would it have been, like, five years ago, if you could, like, just pick up your phone and slide sideways for the best clips of the entirety of Twitch for the week? How cool would that have been? Would have been great for discoverability, would have, would have kept people on the platform and stuff. It would have been TikTok before TikTok. And they just wouldn't do it. Well, let's see what they do with that in the future, I guess. Honestly, even now, I don't think they should try and force people to make their clips into 9x16. But uh, I guess that's what they're going to do, so. So we talked yesterday about the new clip discoverability feature that Twitch is going to be rolling out. Finally, after, you know, how many years? Like seven years of people asking for it. You've asked, why not make better use of clips on Twitch itself? Enter discovery feed. Seven to eight years too late. It's a scrollable feed of bite-sized, funny, hype, heartfelt moments sounds familiar to you. That's because you're a human being with a phone in 2023. Sometimes a good idea is just a good idea. It was a good idea like seven, eight years ago too. It looks exactly the same as TikTok. It's a great idea, but like the last of the party. It is essential you have control over which of your clips are shown in discovery feed. You already control who can make clips of your stream and delete ones you don't like. In August, you'll be able to mark clips as featured clips that will be prioritized in discovery feed. So they might integrate both 16 by nine clips and 9x16, and it says prioritized in discovery feed, which suggests that ones you haven't featured will still be in the pool of ones that can be drawn from, like by default, I guess. Given that this will be competing with TikTok and Shorts and Instagram Reels, and given how many people will have like deleted their back catalog of clips from way back in the day, and just how many garbage clips there are gonna be, and given that a lot of these clips won't have been clipped with the consideration of how to make them engaging instantly for this feed, I don't know how well it's going to go in competing with those things. Twitch is already a much smaller platform than them, but I could totally see me scrolling through it on occasion just to see some other streamers, you know? As I've said before, live streams are very bad at promoting live streams. All you get if you're browsing is a thumbnail and a title that may mean nothing in regards to what's going on in the stream. And when you click into the stream, nothing might be happening. Hell, the stream may not even be in the room. You want your best foot to be put forward, but your best foot only happens like 
a dozen times the stream. Every single moment, people are tuning into the stream and being like, this isn't interesting. I don't care about this and leaving. There's someone right now in the stream who's like, I just tuned in. This doesn't seem interesting. And they're going, please don't leave. <laughs> they added this too late. I don't think it's ever too late to add this, especially because I don't think this will take up much more. Like it, it won't be very costly to implement this by comparison to say long VOD content, uh, like, like YouTube, whatever, because these are just clips, you know? And they're clips with the limited bit rate and resolution of Twitch. So they're already not taking up the ridiculous amount of storage that happens on tw on YouTube. I don't think it's a bad decision. I just think it was a bad decision not to implement this a billion years ago. I hope that editors can tinker with this so I can potentially just hire someone to go through all my clips and then just click the feature once. Uh, I'm also hoping that we can edit clips that other people have made. Because it says you can delete the ones you don't like, but what if there's like a great clip, it's 30 seconds long, and only like 15 seconds of it is good. What do I do with that? You can already edit clips, I think. Not just ones you've made. Well, hopefully that's the case then. And well, guys, tell me when this releases and I'll uh, see about paying someone to do this for me. Because obviously I don't have time. Currently, I feel like I'm doing a lot of things that it's debatable whether it's having any real positive impact in, in growing my brand. YouTube pays for everything else. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, like, YouTube is where all my money comes from. And uh, I'm throwing money at my VOD channel and my new Rambles channel and uh, all this jazz. I've got, I've got, I'm paying Lee for the Reddit recap and uh, uh, going over the Reddit and uh, all that jazz. We'll see what happens. This is an important point that many people missed in my Gabby Bell video. This is also just a point that I made in the video that I just released uh, about Gabby Bell. I talked about a bias that we have in regards to we become more confident in the beliefs that we have if we see them unsuccessfully refuted. It's a subjective assessment. If we see our beliefs on the stage and someone tries to challenge them and fails in our view, our belief that we are correct becomes stronger. I don't know if everyone realizes why this would be a psychological bias, an error in, in reasoning. And it's simply because the ability for one person to be able to, in, in that moment, refute what you believe, it's not evidence that you're actually correct. It's a bias that people take advantage of when they do those things where like they go to a college and they grab random people and challenge them on their beliefs um, and then put that shit on YouTube. Finding people that can be knocked over to make people feel more confident that in themselves, uh, even though it's entirely not justified because a random person, their ability to refute something you believe is, is not meaningful. It doesn't give you more information about whether or not it's true or false. The arguments in favor or against don't become weaker or stronger based on one particular person's ability to communicate or to debate ideas. Um, often in live debates, for example, who wins in some sense is more based on a person's ability to debate. You know, it's a skill debating. Um, communication is a skill, less the uh, actual justifications for the things in which they're claiming. Like the actual claims matter, not the skill of the person doing the claiming. Debates are entertainment, that is true. Do I care about the new GC Online career progress? For those unaware, on the console versions, of GTA 5 GT Online, there is a dedicated thing where like, you tick off certain forms of progress uh, in, in a similar way to the awards, but then you can like showcase it in some way to the players. I'm not directly sure, like, cause I don't have it. It's not available on PC. Would I do that? I probably wouldn't. If what I believe is correct, that things you've done in the past don't count towards the counter when it releases, I'm not gonna redo everything just for that. You get rewarded, yeah, you get, you get clothing and other items or whatever. But honestly, I already have my goal getting all the all the awards and that's what I will focus on regardless of whether this comes to PC. But considering they still haven't released the expanded enhanced version to PC, apparently we're missing a bunch of stuff, which I'm only half aware of because I don't have the console version. It's unlikely that's gonna come either. Not everything starts fresh, but a lot of things start fresh. So it counts some of your previous progress for certain things. I see. Maybe there are certain things that the game doesn't record, so it can't give you that progress. That's possible. But it's just a good policy for a game to have like a checklist of things to do. So that people, when they you know, run out of stuff to do, they can just open up and go, oh, that's the thing I haven't done before. There it is. And you just go do it, you know? Awards serve that function, but they're kind of like tucked away in the stats section. You have to like dig for them and, you know. I successfully trolled people on Twitter. So I tweeted this out and people were a little bit confused. I retweeted Rockstar Games, who just tweeted out a huge red background with a Rockstar logo on it. And I responded to this, interesting, with a 
thinking face. For those who didn't immediately pick up on it, this tweet was done in 2016. But because I'm retweeting it now, momentarily people will be like, oh my god, Rockstar's announced something? It's, it's got a red background, That's, that must be the, the Red Redemption Remaster. And then you realize this from 2016, you're like, oh. I would like to say that this was my joke. I've been got by this at least twice, where someone I follow will like reply to this or whatever. Be like, wow, well, can't wait until Rockstar releases this new game or whatever. I'm like, oh, oh, it's 2016. And so I just retweeted it being like, hey, I can make that joke too. I'm not sure how many people got got by it, but I think it's a funny joke. This is what is sinking Twitter right now. The biggest thing impacting Twitter right now is that Musk is extraordinarily controversial is full of himself and just does whatever decision he likes, regardless of whether or not it's gonna have any positive impacts. He and Twitter are now seen as a huge brand risk to the degree that advertisers don't really want anything to do with him. And obviously they have endless different other options of where to put their ads than just Twitter. So they have no reason to go back there. It is entirely possible if Musk were, were to divest himself away from Twitter in some capacity, maybe just shut the fuck up for like six months, that would change. Obviously, Twitter's constant shows of weakness in terms of stability of the leader and the platform as well has enabled so many competitors to enter the market. Whether or not they will be viable long term is a separate matter. The freemium social media model is a hard one to get to a point where it's profitable. So when we talk about, you know, Sky Blue or whatever the hell it's called and, and Truth Social and Master Don and all these ones coming out, you look at them and go, potentially they'll have the exact same problems that Twitter had in regards to reaching profitability. So even if they might be around for a while, eating a bit of Twitter's lunch, it doesn't mean that they will survive long-term either. Like it's clear that Musk is a liability for the long-term growth, success, and profitability of Twitter, but I'm sure he doesn't see it that way. And as I constantly say, it's so hard to imagine that as long as Musk is willing to lose money on Twitter, that it ever has to really go away. Because it's just such a dominant brand in that space. Yeah, Blue Sky is still invite only and Threads is not available in Europe. Yeah, both of those will obviously have to be solved. And Mastodon is a, a bit harder to use or understand for the average person. I made this embarrassing mistake while playing GTA Guesser. Obviously, I hope that as I play GTA Guesser, I'll get better over time. And I do think I've probably gotten better over time and the images have gotten harder. But sometimes, as is shown here, I'll get the same image twice and do worse over time. So this is me back in 2020 getting this picture of Franklin and I was uh, 100 meters away. And here's me in 2023 getting the same question and <laughs> I'm 973 meters away. <laughs> I wonder how many examples of <laughs> there are of this. Because I suspect when I got this, I wasn't confident in this answer either and I just happened to get it in the right location, but I can't remember every location chat. That's damn embarrassing. Won't make that same mistake again. My favorite audio accessory is going extinct. So this is some of the worst news I've ever seen. Prepare yourself, chat. See this headset I have? Its cable sucks, so it routinely breaks on me. Probably lasts like six months each. It also gets tangled a bit. But other than that, it is the perfect headset. I love it so much. Sound quality is so good, especially considering its price. But unfortunately, I can no longer get it from Mashdrop. They have the, I guess, exclusive rights to the black version of this headset. There's a silver one, the old one I used to use, which was silver, I could still buy, I think but I can't get this one. It sold 16,000 units, 16,000. And it has 3.8 thousand requests. Almost 4,000 people want this headset and it's out of stock. How many of these 16K are me? I have, I, I only just really went back to this website now. I bought three of these. Oh, was it three? I think I bought three of these when I realized they existed because I want one of black ones. Uh, and I guess you would look back in my footage to when I first started wearing them to know how long the first two lasted, but this is my last pair. I just broke my second pair. And so in my cupboard, I only have the gray ones left. So, I, so I've sent them an email like, yo, why can't I get these anymore? What's happening? Tell me, give me the information. I'll give you all the monies. You can get electronics repaired, you know? It's a lot of effort. I know where to go and stuff. And they're not really expensive enough to be worth that repair, I think. So what I'm saying is I might end up having to go back to the gray version of this headset. This is very unfortunate. I went to insane lengths to build this for my room. So, I finally got my cupboard installed. Turn on my light so you can see it. So before, it was a, I know a ceramic, I know it's, it's, it's like a glass kind of thing, like a hard glass sliding door. But I had it changed to all black. So just an entirely black door.
And so when I turn off the lights, it's now more smoothly black. Before, I just had a bunch of tape over my the glass, so it didn't reflect, and so it was more uniformly black. The only thing I have to do now is get my carpet black, and we'll be golden. How much did it cost? Many thousands of dollars. I think it was like $3,000. Australian. Now it might be even more than that, maybe closer to 4,000. Was it worth it? It was. It's a business expense, chat. There's any reason they got us to look good on camera. Answering your most interesting questions. Couch is asking, did I always enjoy editing? And I think the answer is yes. Once upon a time, the hardest editing that I did was taking the audio from debates on like philosophy and religion and tinkering with the audacity settings. Uh, audacity is a program that lets you tinker with audio. Tinkering with the settings to try and make it sound much better. You know, of course I knew next to nothing about all the functionality of that. So more than likely I made things worse. I would spend my time cutting down the intros and outros and and, and gaps and stuff in the in the, in the footage. I'm um, trying to make it sound better, condense it and stuff without necessarily removing too much. Um, I, I liked it. It was, it was just fun to tinker with that kind of stuff. I'm in a discord with a bunch of other content creators and they asked a question like, what's your favorite part of editing? A lot of them were like, oh, you know, adding music or the research or the storyboarding or whatever. My response was the end. When I can sit back and look at a project that I've completed and watch it from start to end and be like, I made that. That is a thing that didn't exist before I did something and now that exists. That is cool. I don't get how people find music for videos. Like whenever I do something, I have something in my mind music wise, but can't find anything. I have a catalog of like a couple of hundred songs. I'll get to a scene and I'll be like, I need a happy song and I will just listen to each of the songs until something fits. Looks like this. Rough categories and I just listen to them all and so I'm like, yeah, that sounds right. And I put that in. I'm not a big music guy. I've talked to people and they're like, oh yeah, I like in my head, I have like a memory of all these different songs and I'm like, oh yeah, this is a, the sort of tune that should go in here. I'm like, I don't remember that at all. I don't remember the names of any of these songs. Uh, I don't remember their tunes until I'm listening to them. I I'm just not that music uh, adept, you know? What were you originally planning on becoming for your future self? As in, what were you studying for? While I always had an interest in psychology, I had a stronger interest at the time in philosophy. I originally believed I would end up studying philosophy, but I was like, oh, there's no job prospects at all with philosophy. Well, uh, I'll, I'll do, do psychology then because psychology was born from philosophy in a desire to test some of the claims and, and various debates that philosophy had on the nature of the mind and, and behavior. It was more coincidence though, like I was repairing hearing aids and I just quit my job because of some changes that the company made that made it unbearable for me. That being that they would no longer let me listen to uh, audio debates and books and audio books and stuff. They wanted everyone to not listen to stuff while doing work, they thought it was distracting. I was the best worker, I did the most jobs. And I'm like, I listen to my audiobooks, it's the only thing that makes me able to do this. Like, nah, you can't do it. I'm like, well, I have to quit then. Cause the job was so unbelievably monotonous and so boring, it had no mental stimulation. I lasted like four days without my goddamn audiobooks and stuff. Uh, and I just couldn't take it. I was there for a couple of years, perfectly fine, the best worker. And they're like, nah, fuck you. I'm like, well, fuck you too. And so I left. And it just so happened that the, the admissions for the university or whatever was, was happening at that point. I'm like, oh good, I'll go study psychology then. Sweet. I had no major future plans for what I was gonna do with the degree, other than that I just imagined that I would use it to get into the public service and end up as a counselor or something. Was it hard repairing the hearing aids? No. You listen to it and there was like, 10 different things or whatever with each different type of device that could possibly be wrong. And like 50% of the time, it was more cost effective and time effective to simply replace the entire device. <laughs> so you'd have like previously refurbished innards of the device and you'd be like, take it apart, put in new one, put it together. As I'm saying, it was a very monotonous job, very repetitive, no mental stimulation, no likely prospects of advancement. It was just that job that paid okay and you just have to be, you just have to accept that you'll be there for the rest of time doing that for the rest of your life or move somewhere else. And I was like, yeah, it's probably about time I go somewhere else anyway, because I was not going to do that shit for the rest of my life. Would you ever go back to streaming on YouTube if the difficulties you faced were addressed? I mean, if the question is, if YouTube live streaming became better than Twitch live streaming, at least for me, would I go back? The answer is obviously yes. I tested it for four months. It wasn't better. Maybe sometime in the future, I'll test it again and we'll see. Have I ever used a dating app before? What's the dating app I have? Bumble. 
I'm still on Bumble. I haven't talked to anyone on Bumble in like a year maybe. But what I do on occasion, because I have a premium account or something, I go on there and I activate my spotlight because it gives me like a free one every week or something. And then I just see how many matches I get. And then I don't get rid of any of them. I think, I think, I don't have that many. I probably got like 30 matches doing this. <laughs> and some of them are good looking, but I just, I just don't have the time. I, I should probably stop doing that bit. Like, it's just an app then I'll open and go boop boop and see the number go up. Okay, I probably shouldn't admit this to people. <laughs> like I haven't even updated my pictures on there in ages. Like I probably should, could put some better pictures on there and, and, and do even better, but it just... I just have the time. When, when I got it, I was interested in maybe dating again, but now I'm just like, ah, it's too much effort. Finding a partner can sometimes be hard, but you know what isn't hard to find? The like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I wish you all the best.